Hey guys, and today I'm going to talk about the user control and how we can make our program more independent. Um, the reason we're talking about this is because if you do make your own user control and you compile it, which will make it into the form of a .ocx file, and you add this to your project, you're going to have to include those files um, in your project with the complied uh, program. Because the reason being, it's going to look for those files and it, the program's not going to run. Um, this happens a lot with the the Winshock um, .ocx file. So what I'm going to show is how to get around this. Um, people don't know about this, so that's why I'm showing this right now. Uh, it's going to be really easy, real simple, real fast. So we're going to go here is the standard exe. And just to show an example, what we would do is we would add a component. And adding that component, you need the .cox file on your computer. Um, if you do add this program to someone else's computer, they will need those um, extra components. Um, you don't need an extra component for the uh, simple tools that are here. Um, but anything else you're going to need, especially if you create your own. See, here's the .ocx file for the uh, top one that's selected up here. Um, so if we go down here and we select any of these, it's going to tell you what you need um, right here. So this is going to have to be on the other person's computer. But the way to avoid this is we create the user control within the project. And when you comply it, it doesn't comply its own C OCX file. Um, but then you ask, well, we still need that Winsock uh, control or some other kind of control. So then this seems almost pointless, you may ask. Well, it's not. If you know what you're doing here, you're going to be creating your own code in this user control. Um, remember I was talking about the, uh, the Windows API? You can create your own Windows API Winsock uh, control. Doing that, you wouldn't have to add that .ocx file with your um, complied program. So if you really want to take that time, it's worth it in the long run, but sometimes eh, it really depends. I mean, Windows 7, you're going to have issues with this, and most people just run along onto .NET. Um, I don't blame them. It's just I don't have the time to go and read any type of new language if there's anything different. I just don't have the time. I've spent so much time on this now, so I'm staying with it for right now. Um, so what we would do is go to the view code here and simply what we would do is start writing the uh, Windows API. So we have option explicit. We have the Windows API go right here and then we have the show and then we create our own properties. Um, if you haven't watched my other videos then you don't know what I'm talking about please watch them but we'd create our own properties. Um, with a property we could have for instance a directory and that plays a sound file. So once we have our control created, our user control, excuse me, I've got to close that, and we put it on here. If we had created that, that um, directory, it would be over here, and we could add in the string of it. So um, in my last video, I was showing the property whatever as a string. Well, we could put the directory for mine would be C colon slash Windows or downloads or whatever um, to a song file that's .waf or WAV, excuse me. Then when I run the program, my if my user control is written right, it will actually run the sound from there. Um, I didn't actually have to put the Windows API in the form. Um, so in here, what we could have is that WinSocket code. But to do this, you're going to have to do some reading, of course. Um, you're going to have to go on the internet or have some books and just read how to program your own WinSocket API. Um, but it could be very helpful um, just because you're trying to be more independent. And being more independent is not a bad thing. Um, a really good example that that is even easier is you look around and there are calendar controls that you can add to your program. So you go over here. And we go to components, okay. Now the ones in here, um, I'm not, probably not gonna be able to find them very quickly. Here's one right here. Um, some of them are really buggy. 
I can't remember. And then even one of these you can't have. Here is something else about the user control. See, if something, if something is refreshed, this is what happens to your user control. The way to just avoid this is just to close the form and reopen it. I think I discussed that in another, another video of mine. And see, your user control is fine. Okay, so we've got this calendar right here. Okay, it doesn't look very great. Looks like this control could use some more code. Well, we can't edit that code. Um, so we could create our own calendar, which I have done, and it's very not very much code. You can do it in about 500 lines or less, um, depending on how much properties you want. Mine has, you can add colors to the different days, um, pick a different day, different month, different year. Um, you can even, when you open it, it, it resizes uh, perfectly. And you, I have a um, resize variable, so it can change the size on the screen and make it fit any resolution I want. So see, and the font will change, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, more, more, more. Um, we could be independent and make our own control, um, which I took time to do, and it was totally worth it. It was totally worth to make my own calendar and then go off to someone else's, and it wasn't working right. Um, sometimes you can't comply that uh, user control with your maybe you're trying to sell your product your um, program and you can't do it because it's off of someone else's rights um, so if that happens you may have to look at it and program your own um, so this is what we we're just talking about being more independent in this video um, that'll be it for now thank you for watching uh, I'm sorry if I didn't do very much work for you but I was just doing a little bit more talking today so we can move on to some other stuff thank you again